During the production of Views by Kevin Augustine on A.A. Paolo by David Munnell and directed by Patricia Lewis Brown. I watched the second show, which was on Saturday, April 27th. I feel like this production had a very, very good concept, but it has a lot of improvement to make. Going into this play, I had really high hopes because my group's final project was on Oedipus Rex, which is what was in, which is what this play was inspired by. And I was really interested to see another high concept production of that play. And when I walked into the scene to, or into the stage or I guess the the showing area in the Magic Studios building, I thought the scene looked really, really cool and I was really excited for the the lights to dim down and it was like waiting for the play to start. Um, I also went and got a pair of glasses, which they said would look really, really cool during the play. So I was really excited for that. Some basic things that happened with the plot. The with the plot, I thought the plot was very, very clunky and chunky. The main issue was I was really excited to watch Oedipus Rex, which had a very basic plot. It was a son comes, or like not a son, but like a, the protagonist comes to the town, becomes king. And then finds out that he has had he has had sex with his mom and had children, and then the fact that he killed his king or his dad, which was the king of that town, and that's basically the the central plot. And the issue with this was that I was kept expecting the central plot happening in AI Apollo, but it took a really long time to get there. And on top of that, there was this whole other plot that I had like no sort of. I, I didn't understand what was happening because they didn't explain it well enough. There was all these conflicts with... So the the basic plot is... they I guess the basic plot is that there was this biodome, which I don't know what that means, but there was a biodome which is in charge, like which is run by this company, I guess, and this company just lost their CEO, don't know, which is... But the company is also run by a family, and then the CEO died, and the CEO's wife has to find a new husband, I guess, but the biodome keeps breaking because the CEO died, which doesn't really make sense, but that was what was happening. And then this dude named Poxilus saves everyone by using this thing called the Alicus. And now, I don't really know what the Alicus is. I, don't, I know it has something to do with the AI, and I don't really understand where the AI came from, and I just felt like the plot didn't make a lot of sense because I didn't understand what was going on. Um, the plot of Oedipus Rex is very straightforward because it was one central conflict and the issue with this play was that there was a lot of different conflicts. Some themes that I recognized from this play was that for some strange reason, it's a very weird theme, is that humanity is just screwed and that we all have to suffer and die and or be constantly sad and depressed, which I don't really know why I got that vibe from this play, but that's the vibe I got. But it also shares a very similar theme with Oedipus Rex, which is that as humanity, we cannot fight destiny. Now, there was a lot of things I liked about this play, but some of the worst parts of it was the actors' performances. Now, I know the words in this play were complicated and big, but a lot of time, it felt like the actors just didn't know their lines. I don't know why, but it's they kept stuttering and... That was a big issue for me because I could see the 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 lines on my subtitles in the classes, and I also could see it because they had a TV with the subtitles on it. But it just seemed like they did not know the lines, which I thought was really annoying. And it made me feel like the play wasn't polished, which is really unfortunate because I know they worked really really hard on, it. and it's totally something that they can work on for the next like next year because I know they're showing the play again next year, and I'm really excited to see it. Again. Um, from a directing point of view, I don't really see how the director had any role besides getting all the actors together, because the plot didn't make sense. I feel like there was no exposition. I feel, or either like the exposition was rushed, it was really, really rushed. And I'd rather have the director make the actors slow it down so that way the audience can understand what's happening. And also, since there was no lighting implemented and the set was very like, like the set was good, but like. They said they were going to like expand on it, and they're going to expand on sound. And it seemed like, since it's a work-in-progress play, that they were just going to expand on everything. It seemed like the director had less of a role in this play. Moving on to scene design, 
I actually think this was the best part of the play. The set was amazing. The doors are beautifully made. Um, the doors would like open up like this, and it was really cool. And then there was the door for the Alicus, which I still don't really know, which just looked like an orb, and it just like opened like this. And I thought that was really cool because someone worked on that, and I think that's really cool. That is like, like, like student made, and it looked really beautiful. The like the colors worked really well. There was like a red and a gray sort of like counterbalance, which really made sense for three hundred years in the future and like the whole technologically forward community. Or society, I guess. And my specifically, my by far favorite part of this play, which really made it better than I think a lot of people would have thought, was actually the stage helper switching the flowers out whenever time passes. So there was two sets of flowers. There was old, crusty flowers that had died, and there was new, fresh flowers. And every single time that the that time has passed, the these like the stage helpers would come out and put the new flower. They would switch out the flowers between each one to show that some time has passed. So that way, either the flowers had gone from alive to dead, or dead to like regrown to real like new live flowers. And I thought that was really really cool. Cool. Also, one of the props that I think was really cool was the bird, which is also my girlfriend's favorite part. For costume design, I think the costumes are also extremely well done. Each costume fit every single character in each role perfectly. The royalty had their white robes, and all the other characters had costumes that fit their jobs. Like the peasants wore peasant clothes, and the the criminals wore criminal clothes, and the soldiers had awesome costumes. And I thought it was really cool. And the props are really cool that matched their roles. And the costumes actually made me feel, as long as the set, the set and the costumes really made me feel like I was three hundred years in the future. Now, since there wasn't any lighting design or lights used during this play, I feel like I'm just going to talk about all the technology that was used because there was so much technology in this play. First of all, the Alicus seemed like a really cool piece of technology, even though it didn't really it didn't really make sense to me. My favorite part of the Alicus was that they set it up perfectly so that way Poxilus, which is the main character, is going to lose his eyesight at the end. And they set it up early saying that he never looked into the Alicus, but then in the end of the play, he looked into it with his actual eyes, which is how he lost his eyesight, which I thought was really cool because I love Oedipus Rex. And uh, another part that I thought was interesting was when I went to go see the play, um, I know from, from my friends who were in the show that the baby's eyes at the end were supposed to light up. There's a baby, which is Poxo's kid, which I still don't really understand how it applies to the whole plot. But there's a baby at the end, and his eyes are supposed to glow up, which is supposed to set off an audio cue, or like a sound cue from from the tech crew. And but the issue was the lights never went up, so the sound cue never came up. So we were just looking there at a silent baby for around thirty seconds, as well as the entire cast is just staring at standing staring at the baby, which I thought was really funny. I thought it was supposed to be like that, but they said that they like it like completely messed up. But I think it was just really funny. And if the baby's eyes did light up, I feel like that would be really cool. And I was one of the lucky few able to use music, like the music blade glasses for captioning, but unfortunately I hated it. During the first half of the play, the glasses did not work at all. And then, even though I wasn't using the glasses, they died. So during the second, like, um, after intermission, I, like, they fixed my glasses and they reconfigured them and connected them to this really bulky charger that I had to carry around as well as the glasses. And I can see how these glasses would be really helpful if I was deaf or as a hearing member of the audience. It was so annoying because the actors never ever knew the lines well enough to match the subtitles as well as it was really hard to focus on what was going on on the stage as well as um, what was happening with the subtitles as well as reading the subtitles. There was a lot of use of sound during this play that was uh that was done well. There was very good use of background noise that would make me feel like I was actually there with the actors and the characters, such as the bird, the alicus, the background civilians was awesome, and the biodome breaking. Overall, this play is a work in progress, so there is a lot of work to do, like refining the lines, more exposition because I was beyond confused, and maybe not use the music glasses for capturing, but other things because they said they were going to use them for other things that would be cool. And I'm really excited to see this play again next year. But for a work in progress play, it was actually pretty good. And there was a lot of good parts, like the set and the costume. But for a regular play, it was pretty bad. So I am going to give it a 25 out of 50 rating.
Anyways, that's my production review.